and my name is Charles. Now I like a woman that's quiet. A woman who carries herself like Miss Universe. A woman who would take me in her arms and she would say, Charles, yeah. And if you fit that description, this is for you, especially. When you're coming in, there you go. Please fill in the front. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Hi. All right. She's doing a timer. of the world. You see, to me, all women are wildflowers. And if you understand what I'm saying, I want you to. You gents are appreciated. And my name is Larry. Look at you. Looking good. Thank you. And I like a woman that loves everything no, and everybody. Because I love everybody and everything. And you know what, ladies? If you feel that this is you, then this is what I want you to do. I just want you to know, I'm here by myself today. I'm usually up here with my right hand, Paraj. So, thank you all in advance for your grace. 
My name is Christian Ross. Welcome to Atlanta Startup Village number 87. So that means that 87 times, five entrepreneurs have gotten up on this stage and they have pitched. Now, you're probably like, okay. Tiandris was like, she's here, I'm here. Let y'all. Thank you for the music, Tiandra. Um, When you vote for the winner at the end, they have the opportunity to get a year for two hot desks as well as parking. That is a $13,000 value. So when you hear these pitches, just know that one of these people will be able to go to the pitch off next year. So first and foremost, I want to ask you, who here is their first time Oh my gosh, this is great. Thank you so much. I'll have swag for one of you later, okay, later. Um, but first, I want to introduce our sponsor because you cannot get beer without Transwestern. Thank you, Transwestern. Chris, Christian, I'm gonna steal that on my next sales pitch. <laughs> you can't get beer without Transwestern. Well, um, hi everybody, my name is Liz Love, and uh, these are my teammates. This is Austin Hibbard, Matt Parisi, and Hannah Holcomb, and we are Transwestern. Transwestern is a commercial real estate services firm. We, are, we have 30 offices in major cities across the US, um, and we love working with businesses like yours. Uh, we s exclusively represent the end users of space, whether that be office space, uh, warehouse space. Nowadays, we have different types of labs, photography studios, podcast studios, you name it. And uh, we wanted to be a resource for those of you at ATV to know that you can carry on your space when you graduate. And we're here to help you understand what that process is. So love to have a conversation with you guys in that regard. Um, one thing that kind of comes to mind is our clients tend to kind of comment that we are very passionate about the businesses that we work with. We're all in a very ever-changing economy right now. And so we are with our clients when on the upswing, when they are building and growing. And sometimes we are their advocate when there are outside causes forcing the need for change. So our strategy is always to align your real estate decisions with your business model. Some of you know what that is today. Some of you don't. But there are plenty of questions, and we want to be here for you. And most importantly, we want you guys to know and recognize that the ethos that ATV has created here for you guys can carry on into your own space. And we'd love to be a part of that and, and help you guys figure that out. So we had some poker chips um, that are on the table there that have a link directly to our team's website, twtenant.com, uh, as well as links to all of our personal LinkedIn pages. So you guys can connect with us. And if you have questions, just want to kind of lay the groundwork out and understand what those next steps could be. We'd love to be a part of that with you. And even more so, we like to give things away, apparently. <laughs> I guess my budget needs to be checked again. But So what we're going to do here is we'd ask you guys to go ahead and get your phones out and scan this QR code. We simply want you guys, this is a poll everywhere for any of you who are familiar with it. We simply want you guys to put your first and last name in in case there's more than one John Smith or whatnot, right? So go ahead and scan this. Just take about five or 10 seconds to put your name in, or if you've got a cool handle that you would like to share, we're okay with that. <laughs> and then I am going to turn over to my colleagues. We've got just got four Poll Everywhere questions, just kind of a little bit about office space, some of the trends that we're seeing to kind of share with you. And also you guys can see what your fellow villagers and other attendees here think about some various opinions in office space. And Hannah, what are we, what are we giving away? Oh, we got a bottle of Four Roses. Single barrel. Whoa. So, uh, I plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> I forgot we had a couple of yours. But anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and Austin. They are going to run this. Anybody have any problems? We're all good on the poll everywhere? Scanned it in. All right. Good job. Good luck. Everyone, I'm Matt Parisi. Uh, cheers. Thanks for everyone for coming out. Um, I'm just going to kick this off with the first question. So amenities have become so important in today's world where we're not going to the office as much. We've been able to work from home. So what's going to attract you? Is it going to be the beer? Is it going to be this room? Is it going to be the ping pong? Um, ATV does a golf simulators are out there. And we don't have golf simulators as an option here, but take a look. 
coffee bar with an on-site barista, complimentary yoga room with daily instructor, catered lunch every single day, massage chairs in an office. What's gonna draw you to the office? <laughs> you can have whatever you want. All right, hey everyone, Austin Hibbard. Nice to see all of you here. Uh, we wanted to ask questions. What reminds you of the boring office that your parents went to when you were growing up? Uh, it's been such an important thing for our clients to understand these days. What uh, brings them into the office? What promotes the fun and collaboration that they want to see to help their companies grow? Atlanta, biggest complaint with Atlanta is probably traffic. Now, if your employer could get you to a more convenient location, how would that change? You know, working from home, we all like not have to commute anymore. ATV is a good location. Got to admit it. All right. All right, and finally, COVID has normalized the, the flexible work style. What, what do you prefer? And how can we build real estate around it? All right, Hannah's going to calculate our winner, winner, chicken dinner. And uh, for you guys that aren't able to, didn't pick up a um, poker chip, you can scan this right here. This will take you straight to our website, twtenant.com. Again, we are Transwestern, um, as well as it will take you to our um, LinkedIn profiles, or you can grab a poker chip on the way out. Let's see, do we need a drum roll? We do. How long does it need to be? <laughs> I can't hold my breath like I used to. Yes. Refresh, refresh. You got this, Hannah. You got it. because she's doing it on her phone. Give her one more second, and if not, she's gonna pull it here in a second. All you guys need to remember today is you guys have a, a great support system here, a great ecosystem here. We love it, we've been super proud to be a part of it. And for those of you that graduate beyond this, we'd love to connect with you and uh, help you guys out. Okay, my pitch is over. And Hannah, here's the winner. There we go, I got it again. Dave Watson. Oh, all right. All right. Nice. You better share, Dave. <laughs> Good luck tonight, folks. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like that's a first. Everyone bring booze and maybe you'll win. <laughs> Well, make sure tonight, any pictures you take, anything you do, make sure to tag us on Twitter. We are at ATLSV. And on Instagram, we are ATL Startup Village. So now, for where you came, what you came for. And first of all, did I say I was giving someone a t-shirt already? No? Okay. I just want to make sure that wasn't my brain. I have a t-shirt. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Without my parage, I feel lost. <laughs> okay. Who has like a crazy thing that happened this week? What's the craziest thing that happened this week that you would share for this fabulous t-shirt? Okay. I didn't think I had to go all Vanna White on y'all, but here you go. Yeah. Home is where your startup is. So who had a, who had a crazy experience? No one? Oh, we have one back there. It's okay. So Friday night, I went to hire our sales guy at Halcyon up in Alpharetta. Had a couple of old fashioned, and he left. And after that, a fight broke out. I helped stop the fight. But afterwards, I was so drunk when I came out, it was Mexican gangsters. That's the crazy thing happened, and I survived it on Friday. Well, you deserve a t-shirt. Let's give it up for the hero. Oh my God. That was like not what I was expecting, right? Okay, 
So let's hear who we have coming up. You guys are gonna hear five amazing pitches. We have some incredible startups. We have Pinpoint that is gonna to come to the stage first. Then we have Underground App. Swassy. Okay. Mr. Tomato, not Mr. Potato. And Four Second Football. So, go ahead and come on up here. Pinpoint. All right, this is on, great. <laughs> All right, I wish I had a fax machine, man. You remember what that is? No? All right. Let's wait for this to buffer. How y'all doing tonight? Good? Good? All right. Let's give it up for our first pitch, Pinpoint! All right. I'm putting Greg here through some endurance training, so let's uh, bear that in mind. All right. So we're Pinpoint. You can see all of your friends and followers on a map. Oh, the mic near the mouth. All right, there we go. Back to the team slide. All right, so I'm Aiden. I'm currently a CS sophomore at Georgia Tech, and I'm a Kleiner Perkins fellow. I actually love making things and throwing them out there and seeing what you guys do with it. Uh, in fact, I actually built an app that's called Hitsnag. It actually had 1,500 users. And then alongside that, I also had an app that ran on 5.5 million pages. All right. Hi, my name is Gregory. I am a CS and math double major at Georgia Tech. I love looking at the analytics of the products I make, and I enjoy making content that generates millions of views, particularly on YouTube. And then there's Teddy. Uh, everyone boo physics for having a test at this time at night because he's not here for that reason. <laughs> anyway, he loves Next.js, and he was an intern at NCR, but yeah, all right, on to the, uh, on to the good stuff. All right, so you guys ever see this? You notice anything about these uh, Twitter accounts and tweets? Uh, a lot of them actually say, uh, meet in NYC, uh, I'm in NYC for a few days, or, you know, hey, I'm headed to Munich, and uh, Gabrielle is one of our beta users, but yeah, so there's a huge trend we're noticing where all these folks just advertise their positions on Twitter, say if they're in a meetup or doing something like, hey, let's go, you know, find some folks to meet. So this is what happens when you're traveling to a new city. So I was in San Francisco this summer, and what happened was I'm like, great, I'm in San Francisco, who should I meet? <laughs> I'm there for the whole summer got to have some time. And what I did was I had a bunch of mental lists. A bunch of my friends had mental lists. We all played guessing games on who we actually should meet. And then we were typing messages one by one for intros, which is taking a lot of time, which we could have been using for our internships. So this is Pinpoint. You can see who's in town for meetups, catch-ups, and hangouts. And uh, we noticed that those people advertise their bio. This is on Twitter, so in that NSF. They uh, advertise, hey, who's in my area to meet? And they all have to kind of guess. And these are kind of buried in threads, so if you're not following those people, you can't really find it on search. So with that, you actually also have people wanting to catch up when they're home, and then just others who are traveling. They're like, hey, I want to advertise to say, like, all the new interns coming into San Francisco who might have a startup idea, and I'm a VC. I want to advertise my position to all those folks and be like, hey, come visit, come visit. We have free oat coffee, all right? Uh, and then, yeah. So also another thing is uh, Twitter DMs have huge conversion rates. Uh, highly suggest you guys use that if you guys are the, the swag guys over there you'll learn about in a minute. But yeah, along with that, uh, this is what Pinpoint actually helps you with. So you can see and search everyone in just one spot instead of having to literally click profile by profile. You can discover friends you didn't know were in the area, like folks you were following, and then you can kill writer's block immediately with just a default opener message. All right, time for the demo. You ready? Yeah. All right. Here, I'll just hold it and you can. Okay. So here's the current map of Pinpoint, where you can see a live map of your current followers, or people who are following. And you can zoom in on specific clusters of people. Let's say, particularly in uh, San Francisco, you just click on uh, right there. And if you click on a marker, It'll zoom in and... Because uh, you know, you're close with Andrew, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we go way back. We go way back. Followers, you know? All right. Yeah. And so essentially what you can do is you can click on their profile or you click on this message button, and it'll take you to Twitter.com, and it'll automatically open up a DM with them, and, and, so, and it'll automatically fill in this message saying, uh, hey, are you in this location? I saw it on Pinpoint at City and down to meet. Essentially, it kickstarts any ideas to like, meet up with people and other things that you want to do. And you can also include a Calendly link on there real quick and just have folks visit, and you can put a location in there. Easy networking. Yeah, and so if essentially you're looking for a particular person that you're following, you can look it up with the search bar. So let's say like trying to find uh, Greg. You just click this, 
He's on my account. <laughs> and uh, essentially, if there's multiple people in a location, you can see a, a certain spiral of all the people, let's say, in Atlanta. And here you can see where I'm at, see, seen in Atlanta, Georgia. Click on the button, does the same thing, and it can get, kick start an, uh, another conversation with another person. Um, and, and with that, we can actually see we have some folks from the Tech Village. We got David, we got Venture Atlanta happening in a few, we got Craig from Rigor, everyone here, everyone's here, <laughs> anyway. And so if you essentially only don't want to just see your follower, following, you can see your followers by clicking this button right here. And the map will automatically switch to all the people who you have followers with. And essentially, it has the same functionality, but with your followers. Yeah, which is pretty useful for influencers. We actually talked to a good uh, significant amount who want to do meetups. And this is a very quick way when they go to a new town to be like, hey, who should I meet? Or how do I gather these people? And that's pretty much it. It's just a map. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give it up for Pinpoint. So we have. A few minutes for questions from the audience. You can yell it out. Who has a question? Anyone? Anyone get a bite? Ah, so for security. So what do you mean by security? Because there's like password leaks. There... What? Gotcha. So the beautiful part about this is if you were looking a little bit here. So what we actually do is we nab just your location that you put on your profile or in your username, or the name, I should say. So we don't actually have accurate location because we don't want to be creepy. Because uh, usually we respect folks' privacy and we hope that they respect ours. So we actually just take the city that you're in and the specific location that you provide just on your bio. So if you don't want to be included, you're not included. You just don't put your location. Yeah, so if, you're not in if you don't have anything on your bio, you're just put in Antarctica and seen in cyberspace. Oh, yeah, that's their favorite part. Literally everyone we know is in Antarctica right now. <laughs> Let's see. If we scroll down, we got to love the chunking on the map. Yeah, we're handling like 1,000 people right now. Got to love it on demo. But yeah, anyway, uh, I hope, did that answer your question? Gotcha. So we're actually doing a close Please repeat phase. the question. Oh, yeah, good point. Is it rolled out yet? Yes. But to who? A closed beta. So we have some of the folks who are going to want to use this the most are looking for meetups if they're traveling conventions, if they're also looking you know, just to meet people in the area. Currently, we just have a wait list, and then we'll just ping you when you're ready. So currently, we have about 50 folks. I, I knew you'd click that feature. Anyway, uh, we can see down here in uh, Antarctica, we got all the folks we know and love. <laughs> so it's a great way to actually see your connections, but just like not in a place. Good question. Do people actually meet up? Well, we launched, oh, there goes my tag. No one knows my name anymore. Anyway, yes, there are people who are actually planning to meet up on there, but we haven't launched it to the public just yet. So closed beta launched yesterday. Absolutely. So he asked, are we going to create a community? Are we going to integrate with other apps? So one good thing that we're thinking about is actually using LinkedIn so you can see all the connections when you're actually in town for somewhere else, which is probably more useful to folks who want to use LinkedIn. And then also with community, Greg actually is a great community builder. He's built the Minecraft Discord that's like 1,000 people at tech. I've only built a community of 500 people, so give it up for Greg. But yeah, so community-wise, we're going to start a little community. We're going to build stuff for whatever people want. If they pay us a dollar, slide a dollar in Venmo, we'll just take it in. Mm -hmm. So we're actually mobile-friendly. So you can, oh, yeah. Got to remember that one. Uh, are you guys mobile-friendly, and will you have an app? Uh, answer is... We actually can make this an app because we're using the coding language to let that happen. And also, really, it's just an app already because you can just pull it up on a website on your phone. Yeah, so essentially, so she asked the question of if 
you're traveling and uh, you want to see somebody who's like traveling and want to see an updated location, it, it gets the current location of their bio. So we use a geoencoder to find that location title and we put a latitude and longitude to that. So yes, that, that would be yes to your question. We give you a notification if someone comes in town. Are there any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, there we go. That's a... For monetization, so actually, here's the slide if any of y'all want to sign up. We were just hoping one person would sign up and pay us five bucks tonight. Uh, so for less than a cup of coffee a month, we're college students, so we need money. And uh, we have closed beta, you fill out a form, and then it'll cost five bucks when you start, or 4.99 for the folks you can use that trick on. But, <laughs> but yeah, if you want it badly, just like mention it in the form, and then we'll like hopefully come <laughs> and answer. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Use it for meetups. Let's give it up for Pinpoint! <laughs> yeah. And if any of y'all wanted the wait list after this, just let me know and I'll hook you up because that was on there for like, what, 10 seconds? <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, question for you. Was anybody like creating things like this in college? Was it just, I wasn't, I wasn't doing Thank you. I wasn't doing that either. I was doing a lot of other things, but it wasn't, wasn't creating things like that. Very excited. We have, oh, he's got his swag on. He says, I've gone underground. We're going to see it shortly. Thank you. Appreciate that. So while he's setting up, I just want to say, first of all, we want to thank Atlanta Tech Village as always, the space that you're in, the home for startups and the place where you can come and grow. There's classes that are open to everyone, workshops. We have women in tech once a month. So make sure you check Eventbrite for the events that are here. And with that, Harold from Underground App. Thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right, I really appreciate you being here. Um, I'll make this short and sweet because um, I really want to make sure that I get my point across. 91%. Um, According to a Next Big Sound report, 91% of all artists are classified as undiscovered artists. Now, these artists have a very difficult time getting their name out. As a result, they're using social media to get exposure. The problem, social media is dominated by mainstream artists. Now, according to that same report, even though 91% of artists are classified as undiscovered, these artists account for less than 3% of all the fans across all traditional social media. Now, we went out and we asked people one simple question. How easy do you find it to discover new artists on current social media platform? Here's the results. 32% said that it was not very easy at all to find new artists on current social media platform. We had 41% said it was only somewhat easy, and it was 26% that said it was extremely easy. Artists are having a hard time reaching fans, and fans are having a hard time reaching new artists. This is the problem that we're solving. My name is Harold Alexander, and I'm CEO and founder of Underground App. Underground App is a social media platform for undiscovered artists. You see, we connect fans with up-and-coming emerging artists. Now, how do we do this? We start with the artists. We build a persona of the artist by asking the artist a few questions like, what type of artist are you? Are you a filmmaker, comedian, spoken word artist, or a musician? If the artists say they do music, we then ask them, well, what type of music do you do? Do you do rap, R&B, pop? country, et cetera. If the artists say they do R&B, we then ask a few more questions to complete their profile. Now, when a fan comes to our site, and let's say the fan is interested in music, but only wants to find artists that do R&B, using our back-end algorithm, we would then match that fan and that artist. So now when a fan opens up their app, open up Underground, they'll only see posts from artists that best match their preferences, with the highest and best matches appearing at the top of the feed. Now we have this really cool feature called a recommendation reel. Now the recommendation reel will hand off fans, artists that match the, that close to the match the fans profile. So if they're not an exact match, but they're close, they'll round up in the recommendation reel. Now artists can go into our platform and post about upcoming events. Now when the fan goes to that event, all the fan needs to do is just open up Underground. And without even knowing that artist's name, They'll see that artist's profile, all their social media handle, plus any songs or material that they're performing. Just one touch to follow. There's no more announcing your social media handle or Twitter handle or Instagram handle on, on uh, Instagram anymore or on stage anymore. Now it's done strictly by through Underground. 
Now, this is also how we make our money. Now, artists would pay us $5.99 per month to have this feature of their app or their uh, profile appearing on the phone. Now, we do have a feature for fans. It's called Director. Now, Director is $7.99 per month, and it allows the fan to see that artist on stage from multiple angles. It's a really cool feature that we're going to be rolling out. Now, this industry is growing. As you can see, this is the artist direct industry. This is where uh, uh, musicians are sending their information directly to the fans and bypassing the record label. This industry grew from 371 million to 1.2 million, and it's only going to continue to grow from there. And this is on the music side. Now, on the film side, you can see the trajectory is exactly the same. Um, it has gone from 186 to 602 million, and in 2020, it went down to um, 20, uh, 168 million, but that's because of COVID. Now, it's time for a little demo. Let me show you kind of what Underground's all about, and you can kind of get a look and see what we have been building. So this is what the feed looks like. Um, these are actual artists that have actually posted on our, on our feed. You can see that you have the, um, the heart here. You can give it a heart, or you can give it um, a fire. Um, we have a cool feature here. On the right-hand side, it's called a dope token. Now, what happens is, let's say you hit this artist and you play the music. Go ahead and take your chances. Offend me with your answers. Do your little dirty dancing. Friends around. Let's say you think that artist is dope. What you can do, instead of giving it a like, which have no value for the artist, you can click on this, and this gives this artist one dope token. I'm not going to click on it because I'm not going to get an artist token. And what happens is that that artist can collect tokens. So instead of collecting likes on Underground, you collect tokens. What you can do is the artist will go to our marketplace, and they can cash that token in. So this particular artist, if they get up to 100 tokens, they go to our marketplace, and then they get... 25 to 50 hours in a music studio for free to record their artists. If you're a filmmaker and you have a, a film on our platform, you can have your film, you get up to 500 tokens, you get your film in an AMC or Regal Cinema for three to five days. So now social media takes on this whole different trajectory because you are now having an option to advance your career without having to worry about unuseful likes. Thank you and I'll take your questions. All right. Who has some questions and who's an artist? Everyone just keeps looking at everyone else next to them. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Harold? Yeah. Yes. Oh, feel free. Shout it out. Yes, yes, we're alive. Um, the question is, are we live and how do we bring in our users? Um, we uh, go to a lot of open mics, um, events where there are a lot of up and coming artists and we, we tell them about the platform. Um, our demographics are college students. So we hit a lot of colleges and we tell them about um, up and coming artists and uh, we uh, sign up from there. We actually have right now more fans signing up than artists, um, which is a good thing, um, but um, we're trying to balance it out by getting more artists on board. But yeah, we hit uh, open mics and we hit colleges to, uh, to promote the app. Yes? Director? Yes. So director is our feature. So what we, what we found out is that when people go to events, especially large events, um, having a good shot at the stage can be very difficult. So what we have is a feature called director. And director would be, um, if you're in, and I use this example, let's say you're in Mercedes-Benz Stadium and you're all the way in a nosebleed seat. And you have, there's someone else at the same stadium, but they're right at the stage. If both of you guys are using underground, when you open up underground, you'll see a thumbnail of the stream of the person at the front of the stage. So if there are 10 people streaming, you'll see 10 different thumbnails and you can hop to each one. As you touch it, it enlarges it and you're actually seeing that person stream from the other person from the stage. So you're able to hop from different phones around the stadium and around the, around the area. And that way you can record from different angles. So you can hop, you can actually see stuff backstage from your seat, even though you can't see the backstage. That's kind of, that's what a director is all about. And that's $7.99 per month. Oh, yes. How long have you been live? What's your revenue to date? Um, well, how long have we been live and what's my revenue to date? Um, we've been live for uh, about eight months on the website. 
Uh, we'll be releasing the Android, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, we're looking for beta testers, so if you want a beta test, definitely take a picture and sign up on our newsletter, and we will let everybody know if you want a beta test. Um, we haven't started revenue. Um, we're we're going to be releasing the Android app here in about two to three weeks. Um, about a month or two after that, that's when we're going to start doing the revenue. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're working on those partnerships right now. Um, we will have that. We have uh, some studio partnerships already. Uh, we have two. We're going to be releasing um, about, when, once we get about 10 partnerships, that's when we're going to start opening it up. The, the token actually is not technically turned on yet. We're going to be waiting until we get our marketplace built up. So we have two signed up, got a meeting with one more. Uh, so that'll be three. We need about seven more. And I got two to three in the pipeline. So we should have that. 10 by maybe sometime mid-October, late October, and then we're going to launch the, uh, the marketplace with that. Yes? When you say what kind of artists, are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, oh, film. F uh, 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 music, actually. Music, musicians do that. Oh, I'm sorry. What type of artists make up our biggest, uh, make up the most artists on our platform? Um, musicians make up the biggest. Um, um, more R&B. Uh, R&B, we have uh, pop would probably be second, and then hip hop would probably be third. Um, the question was seven hundred nine for the director. Um, do you have to pay that? The answer is no. Um, you can get um, one string for free, um, but if you want the other strings, you would have to pay that seven hundred nine. But you can use the the app is free. The see the the see the connect with the artist to post to uh, I mean not post fans can't post on underground um, to connect with the artist to uh, give them a dope token and all that that's free but um, everything else is um, is the other options are paid sorry that's all right let's give it up for underground <laughs> so while they are our next uh, group is coming up to the stage I just want to say. Congratulations to all of you for being here because it takes a lot of guts to come on a stage and pitch in front of people. It really does. <laughs> We've got some back, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I love it. Love a good throwback. <laughs> so very excited. I see you, Charles. <laughs> we have Charles and Alex here with Swassi. Check, check. Thank you for the welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we are leaving stealth mode right now in this moment. We have a one-off presentation just for you guys. We threw out a lot of the boring TAM and everything that we do just to uh, be here. I think everyone in the audience can use swag as a service, eliminating all of the hassle, all the problems. I'm Charles Liscomb, co-founder, and joined here on stage. Alex, do you think this audience needs Swassy? Well, you know, Charles, I never uh, give up an opportunity to do a little bit of market research. So let's figure out if you guys need swag as a service, okay? So you just got to humor me with this, the audience participation part. Everyone put up your hand. Please. I see some people that have okay? So, okay, put down your hand if you have ever been uh, the person that gets to the bottom of that bag or that, that box of all the T-shirts and hoodies and stuff, and your size is just missing. All right. Now... Put down your hand if you've ever received a corporate gift or a piece of swag that's so bad you just wish they hadn't bothered. <laughs> All right, now, oh, there's a couple holdouts, okay? Now, put down your hand if you've ever gone online and designed the perfect pizza and then had it custom manufactured just in time and had it delivered to your house within an hour. Come on, man, you gotta play the right, okay. So, Charles, I just have a question for you. Would, shouldn't buying swag be as simple as ordering a pizza? 
I think it should be as simple and I think it should be as fast. Right now, live behind me, you see the actual manufacturing of some swag. These are machines designed, built, and run by Alex. It only takes seven and a half seconds to get the products done. But if you want to get another unit or you want to get that order going, it takes a lot longer. The problem is that B2C and B2B have a massive gap. And e-commerce has solved all of the problems for consumers, but when you try and go really fast and you have those large orders, suddenly the B2B, the hemorrhaging of that speed starts to show itself. You can have one customer on the app, no problem, but you need that big order, you gotta contact Papa John's. The problem is that B2B procurement is complicated. It's multifaceted and we're in a multi-sided market. You have communication, but you don't have the answers that you need. When your requirements change, the whole scope of the project has to be redone from the very beginning. You have swag ops. The solution that we believe you need is a branded company store private, it has your items, your logo, everything that you need. The team has the time, has the information to build the consensus and to get the orders going. And we need to hook that in to a just-in-time manufacturing system to eliminate all of the other pitfalls of the traditional process. Do you think they need a swag store, Alex? Well, I don't know, Charles. So our extensive research, uh, finding the dregs of the internet, we found a store, a swag store online they're online right now. You can go click on the little bit.ly out in the lobby and order some stuff. But so obviously the store, they've put a lot of effort into it. It has great graphic design. It has a lot of, uh, you know, really nice, carefully carried products. But there's three of them and two of them are currently showing out of stock. I spent the last year putting together the absolute best team. I knew these problems had been solved before. I found a CTO that had done this in a similar industry and had major exits. I solved the services problem, and how are we gonna get all these orders going? Everyone told me, you're gonna flock to this, people are gonna flood to it. How are you going to get these things out the door? So we also answered the manufacturing component. This is the slide with too much text. But we are right now taking the dev environment, forking it, we're going on to prod, it's a huge moment for us. We're going to happily exchange the agony that we know, everything that we've built, the dozens of stores that we're running, and we're exchanging it for an exciting new agony of critically broken new problems, and we're gonna start scaling on our solid foundation that we have. Right now, we have reverse engineered, put all the handwork together and stitched it together. We have over half a million dollars in ARR on hand-built stores, and the back end is literally a laptop in a basement across town. We have a low bar to take over. The current competitors have weeks and costs, so we're flowing down the river going in the right direction. As we go, we're gonna pick up speed. Current competitors also go fast by making you pay a million times. They pay to make it, they pay to get it there. They're really just warehouse management systems in disguise. On our initial product launch with our one-click technology, one supplier would take us to over 60 million in ARR. 1% of one supplier. All right, so we have four seconds left. This is a swag store that we've populated with our proprietary technology, and it's time for questions. <laughs> Question up front, thank you. Somebody that really knows the industry is asking, how are you gonna balance all of the factors, especially stock and just in time? And the key word is trust. It's not that it's gonna take a long time, it's that you don't know that. It's not that it's gonna be right now, it's that you don't know it's right now. The curation is key. When we launch the private stores, we show you this is when you can have it. You can filter by speed, you can filter by cohesive sizes, matching colors. If you have a 6XL tall and that's a key factor, you can find the goods and build those bundles for your needs. We are a SaaS company, I'm sorry, excuse me. 
uh, where's our manufacturing, right? So we're B2B SaaS, and it is multi-sided, and we do have machines that are running, and we know that, but we're trying to leverage one central location and that knowledge to hand the manufacturing off to manufacturing partners so that we can scale. And so the location of our home office in Atlanta is used to, it's like a fulcrum that we're gonna leverage the larger manufacturing scope. So the question is, how do we differentiate ourselves? And I don't like speaking for my competitors, but we do have a lot of analysis that we do to make sure that we have the best items for sale and that we are up to speed with the cutting edge technology. I think that in general, if we can give you a renewable reorder link where you can get what you have previously gotten effortlessly, and then we can also multiply those same setups for your whole team to show you the newest, freshest items, that that's a compelling offer. And also, the ease of, of getting online. You click one button, we build the store, it grows over time. I think that that's a long-term benefit for the people that are on our platform. Second part, you can use us when you want and not use us. You know, we're very contagious, but we're also really sticky. You can just kind of hang out there and like, oh, I need something fast. Maybe they can do it. You can check us out later. In the back. The question is, how do we handle spikes of orders over time? And the key is the back end. You know, we spent a year building this, and if you, I could go back to the major slide, the core technology in our CTO previously transferred his technology to ICE, and that was thankyou.com, and they revolutionized the way that you get rewards industries. They already disrupted all of the stale reward inventory where at the end you get like the 10-year-old phone for all your points. It just didn't work anymore. So we have the ability with just-in-time links and the manufacturing links to give you again that awareness. I got a big order. It'll tell you how long it needs to take there. Variable costing. It's, it's all about visibility and trust. And also we, we can handle the mega orders because the name on the board is one of the largest in the world in production. Any more questions? What's your minimum? What's your minimum? Um, no minimum. There's no minimum. The, uh, the SWASI summit that we held, we flew in the founding team from India, from Canada, from New York. Everybody was in Atlanta. And at the end, I really hate that I don't have it on the board. It's a picture and it just says, any company, any size, anywhere, any quantity, done, like right there. Like that from the very beginning, the complete alignment of everybody on the team and what we're building is let's give you something that you can get. So on the platform, there may be an item that has a hundred piece minimum, but there's gonna be something that just has one. And that gets your toe in, gets you stuck. Next question. So the question is, if you're a mega orderer, how do the costs compare on our platform? I would say that my experience with the mega orderers is not the cost is the problem. The problem is the reorder, right? So if somebody has a hotel services uniform package and they just need one more hotel uniform, they go to their online store and currently it's a completely non-matching product. They, they have completely non-matching uniform lines. But there's no reason that a technology company that is using a SaaS product would lose a price war, right? And, and we won't, we won't. When you scale, we'll scale. Next question. Can you share a bit more of the monetization strategy? Like, how, how are you actually The monetization strategy is the question. Um, swag is very profitable if you can do it efficiently. And 33% um, average margin is, is where we like to stay. That's where the industry stays. And obviously with the larger orders, you go down. But people will also pay for these stores. They like them. I'm out of time. Um, the bigger you are, the higher the table stakes. There are a cost for those. ERP integrations, purchasing management, all the annoyances. Like if we have costs, obviously you got to pay them. But uh, if, you're, if you're nice and easy, it's free. Thank all you All right. Much. Let's give it up for Swati. I don't know why I feel like I need to whisper it. Come on up, Mr. Tomato. So remember when he showed up there and said, hey, they're out of this shirt? I'm not. I've got one right here for somebody. Okay, here's the question. Hey, here's the question. Who in here that someone says that you look like that someone? Who here has a doppelganger? 
la Sofía, mi primera novia, mi primera María y mi primer amor se llamaba Talía. Tengo una colombiana que me escribe todos los días y una mexicana que ni yo sabía. So I went over to Harley Davidson. I was learning how to ride a motorcycle, and when I walked in, some random person came up and gave me a hug, and I was like, "Sir, I am not who you think I am." And yeah, we ended up having a conversation, but he thought I was the interest. Well, look, we've got gangs that happened today, gang fights, people walking up to you. You need a T-shirt. <laughs> I will say one thing. That sir right there in the blue shirt, I'm talking to you. All, I turned around and I saw Neil Patrick Harris and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> but coming to the stage, it's not a potato, it's Mr. Tomato. Hello, Atlanta. How's it going? All right. Uh, I'm Carlos. I'm COO at Mr. Tomato, uh, the all in one platform for restaurant management. Now, if you're like me, and many others, you're constantly looking for the best place with ribs and mac and cheese around town. Now, once we find this perfect spot, we like to keep it, and we like to bring friends around, and everything goes great, until one day, food quality is just no longer there, and just customer service sucks. And then, if you've been through that, you're not alone. It has, it has happened to me and to many others. But most importantly, it has happened to the restaurant industry. Now, poor customer service is one of the leading reasons customers leave restaurants with no intention of returning, and food quality is the number two reason. Now, if you put that together, you have an impressive 51% of customers that won't return due to a bad experience. Now, that's really overwhelming for the restaurant industry, and with that in mind, we have created Mr. Tomato, not potato. <laughs> and it's a real all-in-one solution. While developing Mr. Tomato, we spoke with multiple restaurant managers and owners about how overwhelming it is to use multiple apps to manage your restaurant needs. Now, these apps don't sync between each other, so you have to constantly input your data over and over, which makes it a really frustrating experience especially when you have an update on your menu. So overall, it's a really overwhelming experience. Now, with our all-in-one solution, we help managers and restaurant owners run a more efficient operation and keeping those ribs with mac and cheese always on point and an outstanding customer service. So, how do we do that? It's a good question and then it's a one app for all your restaurant needs, starting with training. It is really important that all your staff is trained both in the products that you offer, but also in customer service. So with Mr. Tomato, once you upload your restaurant menu, it generates automated testing for your menu, drinks, and policies. Now, that adds a lot of value because 31% of restaurant owners find this as a major challenge, and a really expensive one, by the way, because it, uh, it costs around $2,000 to hire and train a new staff member in an industry that has a 75% of rotation. So those are pretty big numbers for the restaurant industry. Now, uh, so business manager, you also have a checklist that you have a centralized way to just send your assignations and make sure that they are all completed, all from your desk. Because at the end of each task, you will get a photo or a video that the task has been completed. Now, when it comes to scheduling, Mr. Tomato has a really good approach centralizing every staff member uh, schedule in one visible uh, access that will be available for everyone despite of who's the chief manager or who this person reports to. It's just every, uh, a very centralized way of managing your operation. Now, restaurants are constantly changing. We have seasonal promotions, uh, special drinks of the season, now that uh, fall is coming, we have a lot of uh, special promotions. So all of that can be updated in just their newsfeed. And in a social media aspect, your staff will be able to have access to all these and just interact with uh, what are the products and what are the latest updates. Most importantly, you can keep your staff engaged with Mr. Tomato, having a leaderboard for employees of the month, but also what are the staff members that have completed most of trainings and certifications. While you can also communicate with them, 
in a messenger that it's more smooth and safe at the same time. You don't have to share your phone number anymore so you can get in contact with your restaurant staff. Now, our revenue model is per franchise on a monthly capacity. We have put together three different models that can help a $799 billion industry, which is the restaurant industry. So there's definitely a need uh, as the restaurant industry continues to grow. Now, our Mr. Tomato creators, uh, it started with Harun, which he has more than uh, 10 plus years of experience in the food tech industry. He had a really successful exit uh, for around $100 million on a startup before. And you have me. I have a lot of experience as a restaurant customer. Trust me, I've been around a lot of restaurants. <laughs> and also, uh, and lastly, Mr. Tomato has been built through the Puzzle development team. They have, they have helped us staff and hire top talent across different regions. If you want to know more about Puzzle, there's a guy named Carlos, second floor, that you can ask more information about. And that's pretty much Mr. Tomato, your new restaurant operation solutions. And thank you very much. Open for your questions. Thank you. It's open for questions. Hit me up. That's a great question, and that's even something that can be trained with a Mr. Tomato. How you keep your device clean while using it in uh, a restaurant area. It is a bring your own device model, so your restaurant, your employees will have access from their personal phone. So it's not like you're gonna be sharing a tablet around, but it will be every personal device, which also gives, uh, you know, all restaurants are always taking care of the secret sauce. So. If you're not out of, if you're out of the restaurant, then you won't be able to access menu information. So it has like geo security, and uh, employees cannot screenshot. So. Great question. Um, how do we solve the problem of integrating? Uh, with, well, how do we solve the problem of multiple apps and how do we integrate with other apps? Currently, and as we have spoke with multiple uh, restaurant managers, they use up to five different applications for scheduling, for menu, uh, for messenger, and all other uh, staff functionalities. Now, we solve by putting all that together. Right now, I just highlighted like the top functions that Mr. Tomato can have. And what every restaurant manager will care about, it's a POS integration. It's how the money comes in. And that's something that we are developing right now, a POS integration. So yeah. Great question. So he's asking, what's the onboarding process and who gets to manage all this data? We're currently working on uh, finalizing our customer success process, but we have indi uh, individuals that are trained in our team to help you with all the data uploading, because that's a really painful part, where you have to put all your data and all the specifications. So there's a team member that will uh, help every restaurant manager and owner do that. And then uh, the managers will have a super admin that is also a web-based platform. So you will be able to see all that information from your computer and upload uh, next uh, you know, promotions and everything like that. Awesome. So he's asking if it is integrated with uh, personal devices, how do we get to manage it? Right now, there is an iOS and Android version. There is a web-based portal where the managers will get to see all the data. And it also has an iPad version, so it's, um, it, it can be used on the three devices. And we're coming with an updated Flutter version, so it just will be easy to release uh, updates across multi-platforms. Oh, that's a really good one. Uh, 
our CTO went to his favorite restaurant and he had my ribs with mac and cheese story happening to him. He always ordered the salad with small tomatoes. He went, there was a new waitress, never catch the order, and the salad ended up not coming with tomatoes. So that's how we came up with Mr. Tomato because we found a problem and we found the name right on the spot. <laughs> So the uh, question is, what's our go-to-market uh, strategy and how do we sell to restaurants? Right now we have multiple channels, especially on social media and ads we're throwing out there. Because as surprising as it can be, there's a lot of restaurants that are looking for tech solutions at this point. So that's uh, one of our primary start strategies. But also we have business development reps that are connecting constantly with restaurants and people on the ground. That's kind of the next phase. And we're going to just do restaurant visits. Managers are really busy because they don't have Mr. Tomato, so they don't have time to get on the phone, but sometimes they get time to chat with us in person. So the question is, what's the overhead cost? Uh, you know, just to give you a more generic question because the time is over, uh, the operational cost is really not as high as uh, what we're expecting of sales right now. We're in a pre-revenue stage. So of course, right now, everything is in a board, but we hope that in the next stage, we will have some really good profitability. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tomato. All right, guys, this is the last pitch of the evening. And with that, right afterwards, the poll will open. You see right there, it says slido.com and the code, which we will have up. The vote is not open right now, so don't go and try to vote because it's not open. But we have something very special. Not five seconds, excuse me, not 10 seconds, not five seconds, but four second football. Have you ever heard of that? Four second football? Me neither. Joe, you ready? I know you're getting ready, don't worry. Take your time. Tandris is back there rocking. She threw on some earth, wind, and fire. <laughs> All right. Let's give it up Hello. for four-second football. All right. Nice to meet you. My name is Joe Hamilton. I am the founder of Four Second Football. So in football, some random stats. Um, the average play time in football is four seconds. Now, when a defense blitzes, the uh, average sack time is now two and a half seconds. And 58% of all uh, sacks happen between two to three seconds. So we pull some uh, statistics and we have two color, two color coded uh, columns here. The column on the left is when quarterbacks get rid of the ball in under two and a half seconds. The column on the right is when they throw the ball above two and a half seconds. And these are five of the top quarterbacks in the league, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, uh, Patrick Mahomes. And you can see that when they throw the ball under two and a half seconds, they are um, large in part a better player than when they get rid of the ball in above two and a half seconds. And some of the metrics that we took are touchdown to interception ratio, yards, uh, passer rating, sacks, completion uh, percentage, and fumble, uh, fumble grade. All right, so the problem. The problem is quarterbacks hold on to the ball, so therefore they get sacked. And then when they get sacked, they take big hits, they get concussions. Um, and also at practices, there's no way to truly simulate. A lot of coaches still use the uh, hand clock or still count out loud to four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So our solution. Um, our solution, we created uh, the first smart football. Um, our football will give you actual playtime simulation. Uh, it will build an internal time clock in your quarterback's head, and we can track the data and then export that to you so you can track the player progression. Uh, with our product, you can change the timer anywhere from one to 10 seconds, and uh, you can then, like I said, you can see your past plays for that day, um, but basically, the default time is four seconds that you give your player, or you can adjust it to two and a half, and when you want to simulate blitzes. 
All right, so our competition. Most of our competition metrics are old, outdated measures. They still use the hand clock. They still count to five Mississippi. Um, this is the only other product in the market right now that uh, tries to simulate a four second play. Uh, this is called a QBT, but we're better than them because uh, they don't actually give you data and um, their product doesn't stop if you get the ball away in four seconds. It goes off regardless on every single play. All right, so our advantages. Uh, our advantages are that our product is mobile, our app will give you data, and there will be no discrepancy on close plays because if you get the ball out of your hand under the time that you set, it'll stop the clock. All right, our market size. The market is a total size of about $106 million that the market did in total football sales in 2021. And football is growing, so that number is growing year over year. We believe that we can acquire or obtain about 15 million of the market. Our target audience, um, we're going to go after seven on seven passing leagues. We're going to go after non-contact uh, football uh, leagues, um, any level from high school to pro um, and um, yeah, semi-pro and uh, pro teams. All right, my team consists of myself currently. Um, I am in the market for a co-founder, a technical co-founder. So if you're interested, please reach out. Um, and my contact information, you can follow us on all social medias, um, go to our website, or by email. And everybody's been doing demos, so I'm going to follow suit. I'm going to do a demo real quick. All right, so the way that it'll work. All right, so once you connect your device, You'll come in here, you can change the setting, you can change the timer anywhere, like I say, from one to 10 seconds, and you can change it in half second, uh, half second increments. So we'll just start at four, and you can test out the, the, uh, the sound. Oh, I don't know if the... Not sure if that, okay. So you can make a referee sound, or, all right, you can, you can make an air horn sound. Those sounds are known on the football field for my football fans. All right, so we'll just set it at four seconds. And so, like I say, the way it'll go, once I grab the football, you see the clock will start. If I get her away, all right, that was a little slow. So we'll go here. I grab it. If I get it away in under four seconds, one last time. <laughs> all right, we'll make sure we get it. All right, under four seconds, no whistle. The other two times were over four seconds. So it'll build that clock over time. Your quarterback will adjust. And that's my time. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for questions. Yes, any questions? Yes. Yes, uh, the question was, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's what we're in the uh, phase of testing now. We, the, the, question the question was, yeah, I'm sorry. The question was, is there a chip or hardware inside the football and how durable is the football um, over time? So we are in the phase of testing that now. We're in our beta phase. So we are uh, partnering with a few high schools, a few um, flag football leagues where we can come out and do their open runs. So far, I mean, we've been testing for about a month. So, so far, we have not seen any problem with durability. But, I mean, time will tell ultimately. Um, to answer that. Any other questions? Yeah, so the question was, is somebody else controlling the management of the app while the uh, quarterback is playing? Uh, yeah, the, the coach, um, all he has to do is just set it up. So you, all you do is go to the home screen and just turn on whichever device you want. You can load multiple quarterbacks so you can compare player performance over time. So if you got a quarterback competition, you can compare this player's efficiency. With our paid uh, app version, you can export the data and it'll tell you this player on 90% of his plays for this week got the ball away in whatever time you set versus this player was 60%. So you could use it as a player performance and comparison tool. But yeah, the, um, the app is really simple. We actually made it so that if a, co if a coach wants to lock their phone, because most coaches have told us they don't want to have phones in, like, in their hand at practice, right? Unless you're like D1 and you got a thousand coaches. But high school, you could put it in your pocket and the alarm will still go off. So we, we set it up so that it makes it like you don't have to worry about it. You just set it and forget it. 
Yes. Yes, uh, yeah, it's connected through Bluetooth. So yeah, um, we have uh, Bluetooth on our sensor here. And like I said, we have hardware inside the chip. I mean, inside our bracelet and inside the football. So, you know, it works very similar to like your window that has an alarm on it. And when you lift it up, it says window open, window closed. The range is up to 150 feet. So you can be on the entire football field and you don't have to ever worry about, a coach won't have to worry about running out of range in the open field. Yes. Absolutely. So the question was, have we considered adding other sensors such as like an accelerometer? Um, and that would be our next phase. Um, whenever we can get enough uh, capital to, you know, push us forward, then we absolutely want to track things such as throw speed, like miles per hour, velocity, like this quarterback had a 30 degree velocity on the ball. And then you could really make it a comparative and competitive uh, tool and advantage. So, yeah, we want to add other things as long as it doesn't add too much weight, because we have to keep that in, in perspective too. Right now, our ball is only about 0.2 pounds more than a normal ball without our hardware. So a normal football is one pound, ours is 1.2. It's virtually unnoticeable, so uh, we feel comfortable with that. So as long as we don't compromise that. Yes. Okay, so uh, the question was, uh, are we working on a patent, and where in the manufacturing process does the, uh, the chip get put into the football? Um, so, yes, we are working on our patent. We have a, a patent attorney that's uh, submitting an application uh, currently for a patent. And in the manufacturing process, the, I mean, the, the way that they make the football, I mean, they make the sleeve first, the outer sleeve, and then you have a bladder, right? That's what holds the air on the inside. So they put the chipset on top of the bladder, and then they put the outer covering on top of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, so the question was, is there opportunity for licensing for like top manufacturers? So great question, that's actually like our hope, right? So I, I said earlier, the market was 106 million, um, and we believe we can hopefully get 15. So uh, Wilson owns 70% of the market, and that's because they have official contracts with the NFL, college, and high school. So we want to show that there's a demand so that they want to come partner and, and license our technology, put in their football. All right. All right. Let's give it up for four second football. Okay. I'm going to take my computer up. I'm going to open the poll and you can vote. All right, the poll is now open. Slido.com, code ATLSV87. Let's see. Oops, not trying to print. Not trying to print. Slido.com, S L I D O, and put in ATLS. B87. All right, there we go. I was like, what's going on? And once the, what is that? Jeopardy? Yeah. <laughs> once the Jeopardy music ends. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's 
give it up for Swaggy. Huh? Swazzy, I'm sorry, Swazzy. I said Swaggy. I guess I was feeling swaggy. Um, congratulations, they are going to the pitch off. We will be back here December 5th at 7 p.m. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Oh, oh, they have some swag. Okay, yeah, go ahead. It's nice, guys. It's really nice. I told them they couldn't give it out beforehand. I didn't want to influence the decision. <laughs> God. Okay. Okay, let's have two people who is the first time here. All right, one in the front and one in the back. Hey, she interviewed. Yeah, give that girl a, give that girl something. <laughs> Alex, she's in the very back, raising her hand with the red cup. Who came from the farthest away today? Where'd you come from? You did not say Midtown. You did not say Midtown! Where'd you come from? Where? Johns Creek? Anyone come farther than Johns Creek? Okay. Snellville? Where at? Helen, Georgia. Oh, that's far, y'all. All the way in the back? He's all the way in the back. Oh. Palmetto? He came from Helen. Helen, Georgia, give that man something nice. Right back there. Okay, I like that. And the people who ask questions. Did you have something for him? Okay, here we go. This one's yours, okay? You still have something left? Okay, his is in the back. I just have one. All right, guys.